people. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. My name is I'm Unique, and I wanted to share. I want to share a quick message that God has shared with me to share to you guys. Uh, the message is coming from Proverbs chapter three, verse four. It's a familiar verse of scripture, and it says to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, to lean not into thine own understanding, or to trust the Lord with all in with all your heart, and to not lean on your own standing. To acknowledge Him, acknowledge Him in all of your ways, and He will direct your paths right um if i have to tag a title to this message even though it's really quick i would say it's not to, to not put matters or take matters into your own hands um when we are pursuing god pursuing the things of god trying to live out god's will for our life there will be opposition we have a personal adversary the devil a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour so you know being a christian yes it's a wonderful thing it's a victorious life to live but we have to understand that we also have an adversary we also have, we will have opposition we will have um things happen in life that will test our faith that will cause us to have to pray more that will cause us to have to lean more on god that will cause us to have to seek god more that will cause us to have to worship that will cause us to have to you know go into you know change our circle get around people who know how to pray and fast we have to fast you know it's all kind of things that we have to do to maintain our spirit man uh once we begin to get into a place where we have start to have opposition um so i said to not take matters into your own hands because we are human and um i think our human nature is to try to go into survival mode when we start to feel like we're under threat or where you know things are getting shaken up we go into this thinking mode like i gotta start making stuff happen i gotta you know i gotta do this i gotta make sure my money right i gotta make <laughs> gotta make sure my health right i gotta you know we, we go into survival mode and there's nothing wrong with having strategy and having a plan and being able to think and to problem solve but it becomes an issue when we don't factor in God's word or God's presence in the process of our problem solving or in the process of us making decisions, acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The moment you begin to start to think on your own and your thought process, we have like thousands, I think it's like millions of thoughts a day. Like our thoughts are ongoing. We have thoughts about other people. We have thoughts about maybe tomorrow. We have thoughts about ourselves. We have thoughts, we have all kind of thoughts about the future, some thoughts about the past that come through our minds. But if at any point we get to thinking too long, glory to God, thank you, Holy Spirit. Any point we get to thinking too long, thinking too much without the word of God becoming up in our spirit, then that means we need to stop and actively, intentionally acknowledge God in all of our in in our way. Uh, if I'm making sense. So if I'm having, you know, constantly, our heart is in a state of meditation all day. One of my favorite Psalms, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. So our heart is in a constant state of meditation. It's thinking about this thing. It's feeling this thing. It's, our, it's, it's like a constant thing. We don't have to tell ourselves to think. Like thinking and having feelings is is a part of our autonomic nervous system. That means that we don't have to tell um, our, our involuntary nervous system. We don't have to tell our, just like we don't have to tell ourselves to blink. We don't have to tell ourselves to breathe. Like that, that thinking and feeling is, is that type of type of things like this we're humans that's that's, that's what we do it's what we're created to do right but um so when we um but when we get into a state of meditation as we're thinking as we're going throughout our day and these thoughts are starting to pile up and we're thinking about this we're thinking about that we have to some if if we haven't been in prayer or maybe if we haven't been studying the word or being intentional with our bible study we have we may have to take a moment within our day as we're going as we're thinking as we're moving to stop and say i need to consult with god about my thoughts i need to consult with god about the route that i'm taking and it's, it doesn't sometimes it doesn't have to be like a drawn out three hour ten hour prayer session and loud and hooping and hollering and shouting and falling out sometimes it doesn't take all that sometimes it's just like a moment to say hold up my mind is all over the place you know I'm thinking about too much I'm trying to do too much um I need to consult with or acknowledge God right because if you don't take a moment to 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 
to come out of, of, of the trance of thoughts and emotions that you're having and acknowledge God, then you will, you will begin to take matters into your own hands or you will begin to glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You will begin to make decisions out of the place of your emotions, your emotions going crazy, your thoughts going crazy. You'll begin to decide out of that, out of that state of being, make decisions, um, out of that state instead of, um, taking a moment to step back from your thoughts and your feelings, what you think, what you feel, and acknowledge God and see what he says concerning the situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I, I made a podcast um, recently. It's on, uh, it's called Keeping It G. I put the link is in the description below. But um, on the podcast, I talked about decision making and strategy and planning and things. And um and talked about how our life, uh, the, the life that we live, the life that we have now is a result of the decisions that we make. And our future is a de is, is determined by the decisions we make today. Uh, you know, I can decide to go and, and do positive things and so therefore have a positive future. My future is going to be good because I'm doing positive things. I'm eating right. I'm praying. I'm seeking God. I'm exercising. I'm reading. I'm getting knowledge. These things are propelling me into a positive, um, into a into a better future than if I were to be drinking and smoking and partying and, 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 and just not seeking God and, and gossiping and, and all of that sleeping all day, not working, not doing anything, either whatever decision we make is going to affect our life is going to determine our destiny is going to determine our course the course of our life if you will and so it's very important to acknowledge God in all of your ways not just when you go to church not just when you have your prayer time in the morning not just when you pray say your our father's prayer at night you know I'm not judging you I don't know where you are in your spiritual walk but I'm just giving you the wisdom that God has given me today um because I was having at work having some moments where I w it, it was just like an influx of thoughts and just I'm thinking about this I'm getting anxious and um the Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear uh, but one of power of love and a sound mind there's another scripture one of my favorite scriptures it says when anxiety is great within me lead me to the rock that is higher than I hallelujah glory to God and so we have to, when, when those thoughts begin to become anxious, when our thoughts aren't good, when our thoughts are, um, in the form of questions and, oh, what if this, or what if that, or I don't know about this or dang, or condemning thoughts, you know, those types of thoughts, they drain us. They make us feel down. They, they oppress us. And it's not a good feeling when you're having all those thoughts and you feel like there is no, there is no way out of it. Like you, 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 you become so identified and engulfed with those thoughts that you feel appreciated prison in prison and you feel oppressed and you begin to feel depressed and discouraged and all that stuff and so it just speaks to the importance of being able to stop and acknowledge God that he is the rock of our salvation our salvation means that to, to have excuse me to have salvation means to be free from something means to have a way of escape from something means to not be stuck in a situation but there's knowing that there's a way out the bible even says that if we are tempted god will provide a way of escape for us and so even when we're having all these thoughts about maybe you know to be more real and down to earth like even if you're trying to walk in purity and, and celib or celibacy and save yourself for your spouse or just save yourself for the things of God. Like you may see someone who is attractive to you physically and you may begin to have lustful thoughts. Um, but God says, he says, you don't, you, you don't have to give into those thoughts. It's, if you give into those thoughts, it's up to you. He says, I provide you a way of escape. And the way of escape may not be just like somebody, you know, blowing their horn and telling you to stop, don't do it. It may just be God planting a seed of a thought in your mind to say, you know, to redirect your thoughts to something else or you know something like that or <laughs> it's it's you have to be strategic with this but ultimately i wanted to i just wanted to encourage someone to not take matters into your own hands do not make decisions when you are in a volatile emotional state or an anxious mental state I have made many decisions that I, I wouldn't say I regret, but that I know I could have made a better decision had I waited on God and and become more glory to God, hallelujah, and 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 settle and wait and be still, been still. The Bible says in Psalms forty six and ten, be still and know that I am God. 
Hallelujah. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Sometimes we have to be still. Hallelujah. Our self, I have a poem called Salvation and Stillness. And it just talk, it's, it's great. But it just speaks to how sometimes we have to be still to, to receive salvation. You know, it's hard to um, receive anything if you're all over the place. I think I may have made this metaphor before, but I think about football players. And I don't know if you, if you know about football, there's this, this position called a receiver. And the receiver is the person who runs all the way up the, uh, the football field while the quarterback or the person who's throwing the ball is going to throw it to this person. But it's going to be hard for the receiver or the person who's going to catch the ball to catch the ball if or for the for the um, quarterback, the person who's throwing the ball to, to aim to hit that person if the, pers- if the receiver is all over the running across and this and that and ducking it but if the receiver is in a position he's getting in position he's running he's 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 locked in he knows where he's going he's communicated with the quarterback and the quarter so the quarterback already know where to throw it to the receiver just has to get to a certain spot and wait and get there and catch the ball like and then so on and so forth but it's hard to receive sometimes from god if we're all over the place if we're moving (laughs) <laughs> glory to god i think about baby a little baby when you're trying to clean a baby's nose and they start fighting you and like nah hollering making a scene especially if you're in public it's like so embarrassing right but i think about that like it's hard for you to clean that baby's nose and to get that baby straight if they all over the place but sometimes you have to lock them down you know like ah. but um yeah glory to god so anywho i could come up with metaphors all day but i want to encourage you really like seriously to take some time to get out of your routine to get out of the cycles of thoughts and behaviors that you have been a part of for a certain amount of time glory to god just to get by get out of your survival mode and 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 come out of that and and just spend some time with god you know get out like don't be so carnal minded the bible says to be carnally minded is is death to be spiritually minded is life and peace and so if we're always focused on the next thing this way this i gotta go and we never take time to look up to worship to acknowledge god then we're only gonna we're gonna begin to depend on ourselves or even start to depend on other people which is not how we were meant to live no i'm not saying that we shouldn't have community or that we shouldn't you know place certain expectations on ourselves but ultimately we were created to be an eternal relationship with god to depend on god for everything i mean we depend on him whether or not we want to acknowledge it i depend on god for my breath you know to breathe we depend on god to keep us alive like literally um and so it's it's just it will put you in a better position to make a better decision if you do not continue on continue on and try to continue to take matters into your own hands it doesn't take long sometimes if you there's a book called think and grow rich and it says that a relaxed mind is a uh god i can't think of the quote i think it's is a relaxed mind is a creative mind or something like that and it just talks about how we get some of the best ideas or we get some of the best thoughts uh when we are in moments of stillness where we're not doing anything we're not trying to accomplish anything we're just sitting still and then boom god will drop a a beautiful thought or an idea in your spirit or maybe bring something to your remembrance that you you know maybe you forgot about or you suppressed or whatever but you have to be still enough to receive it and to be still that means you have to stop and acknowledge God and all your acknowledge him stop right where you are glory to God thank you Jesus so anywho don't take matters into your own hands trust you not in a friend and a guide you know and sometimes we do that after we've done everything we can and, and we think like I'm, I'm out of ideas i'm tired i've been doing everything i know how to do um so i'm gonna go to such and such and see what they think i should do or i'm gonna go to such and such and there's nothing wrong with getting godly counsel you know about stuff but ultimately even with that that should be pointing us back to god it shouldn't be somebody else's opinion that we're trusting just because all right what we've done isn't working you need to consult with God to see what he says, to see what he's calling you to do or to not do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Right? 
excuse me so anywho um god bless you god bless you god bless you once again um do not take matters into your own hands trust in the lord don't trust in yourself don't trust in your 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 own ability your own your own carnal creativity your own um decision making and i'm preaching to myself as well as you all you know i'm not saying that i got this all together i'm just giving you what god has shared with me do not take matters into your own hands be still acknowledge god so that you can receive the idea the word from god that you need to make the decision that's going to put you in a position to win that's going to put you in a position to be in god's best in God's will for your life that's going to put you in a position hallelujah to walk into destiny and to not walk in destruction and not walk in defeat and not walk in tirelessness and restlessness and oh my god and discouragement and depression you know depression is like one of the most silent killers ever because we like walk around with it we're like i'm okay i'll get to it tomorrow i'll check in with i'll go to church tomorrow like the uh, commercial with the dude it was like maybe i'll go to school next year maybe next well no do it right now like but for real like you can't keep putting you can't put off your relationship with god you have to make make that a priority to check in with god every day like if you can't do it every day just like i said whenever you get a thought or whenever you start to feel overwhelmed make sure that jesus christ is your resort not a drug not a pill not a i don't know whatever your vice is not sweets or food or whatever you know what i'm saying like go towards something that's going to get you into the presence of god Sometimes it's worship music for me. Sometimes I play scripture through on my Bible app. Sometimes um, I have to call um, a godly friend, a person who I know can pray with me and can feed me scripture. Or sometimes it's journaling and just talking to God. And um, sometimes it's, you know, it's a culmination of things. But ultimately, I'm doing things to get me back into a settled place where I'm in the presence of God, where I can experience his peace, his joy, his love, the sound mind that he said he's given me. Because all the other stuff didn't come from him. Right? So, anywho, I, 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 in my final closing, <laughs> in my final closing, I, just once again, do not take matters into your own hands. Trust in the Lord. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Do what he's called you to do be encouraged keep the faith continue to know that god has a plan and a purpose for your life regardless of where you are and how you feel how overwhelmed you feel how sad how disappointed how ashamed you feel about what you've done or who you are who you think you are god still loves you nothing can separate you from his love don't allow the adversary to make you think that you don't even need to worry about praying the enemy will get you sometimes and in a corner and make you think well, don't it ain't no point in crying out to god it ain't no point no nah, don't even worry about trying to go to church don't even worry about trying to go to therapy don't even nah don't nah you done it's too it's too late don't worry about it your life is over you know don't let the enemy um back you into a corner he says whoever call the bible says whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved the bible says i cried unto the lord in my distress and he set me in a large room the bible says that the righteous cry out and the lord hear hears them Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all them out of them all. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. You know, get the word down in your spirit and cry out to God if you need to. And don't let nobody shame you for crying out to God. When you were ba when we babies, we cry when something wrong with us, when we hungry, when we sleepy, when we uncomfortable, when we hurt, whatever we they babies cry loud like loud they, they they don't care they're not looking at they um hallelujah they're not <laughs> they're not looking at they um what they say oh excuse me they're not looking at they mama and daddy and sister and brother or people around them to check and see like is it okay if i cry right no if something is wrong they cry but i think when we become adults we we get so 
adult like that we forget like it's okay to cry it's okay to scream or cry out because we still have those same emotions you know I'm, it's an appropriate place or time to have you know to scream i wouldn't be in the middle of the stove screaming you know it might make alarm somebody you know there's a, a place and time for it. you may need to go to your car or go to your home in your personal space and cry or scream you know sometimes you got an ugly cry sometimes it gets you you need to be at the altar at church on listen floor ministries but don't let nobody stop you or embarrass you or make you feel ashamed for getting your breakthrough for doing what you need to do hallelujah to get in your father's presence for your god for your father to hear you for your father to 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 come and come to your rescue don't be ashamed jesus christ is a savior hallelujah glory to god hallelujah we don't need a savior if we don't need to be saved like if we got everything together there's no point in having a savior He's, Jesus said that it's not the healthy people who need a physician. It's, oh, God, hallelujah. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry, not sorry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He says it's not the healthy people who need a physician. It's the sick people who need a doctor. Like, I'm not going to go to the doctor if I'm healthy and, and all my. I don't need an eye doctor. If I got 20 20 vision, I'm not going to just keep going just to go. Like, I'm, I'm just checking in, you know. Or, you know. We have doctors, we have people in these professions because there are problems that need to be solved. Same with Jesus. Jesus is our savior because we need saving. The hard part, I think, is just acknowledging that we need saving sometimes or knowing the extent to how, oh, glory to God, I feel your presence. Knowing the fact that God wants us to have an abundant life he doesn't just want us to be a slave out here oh my gosh y'all he doesn't want us to be a clone and just work for some i'm not saying there's no wrong with having a job you know get you we need to be working but he, we're not just created to be out here purposeless and and living aimlessly and doing what everybody else wants us to do and not knowing who we are and working and working and working seven days a week working 80 50 60 hours a week and not taking care of ourselves and not keep, having emotions and just being a robot we weren't created to be like that jesus christ said that he came that we might have life and who god help me he said that we he came that we might have life and life more abundantly so he not saying you know you ain't got no life or your life isn't cool he's saying i can't i want you to have even better i want you to have another level another a better quality of life than that which you have right now hallelujah glory to god but in order to receive that life in order to receive better in order to have better we have to <laughs> be in a position to receive the goodness of god we have to be in a position within our heart within our mind to say wait a minute i'm not feeling okay i need to check in i'm you may have to go to therapy you may have to find you a good you know christian counselor or something like that glory to god but you need to do what you need to do to get to your savior sometimes you got to disappear on people people that's causing you stress and anxiety and say i'm look i'm i need to take me a few I, i'm i'm fine there's nothing wrong with me i just need to do this for me i need to heal i need to go and 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 i'm not, I'm not feeling well you know, if you break your ankle in three places and it's hanging out your foot, then you go. You don't hesitate to go to the doctor. The same thing with your uh, your mind and your heart. <laughs> That's what one of my ther therapists told me. Like, if you sprain your ankle, you go to the doctor. That can happen with our souls. We we have so much trauma and stuff going on within us that we internalize and that we just bury and bury and bury and just continue to cover up we just keep going keep trying to survive i gotta survive i gotta get the bag i gotta provide for my family gotta provide for my you know i gotta i gotta i gotta i gotta make sure this person's straight i gotta help this person i gotta do this for that but i gotta save the world uh jesus is here to save the world not us 
<laughs> I know I'm probably stepping on somebody's toes. I'm stepping on my own toes. But don't don't get so consumed with, with what you have you have to do that you forget what God can do. Don't get so consumed thinking that you you have you making decisions and you doing everything is going to put you in the best position. I know it's best. I know it needs to be done. I know what this person needs to be doing. I know. It's like you you go into this. I'm speaking to myself, y'all. Listen. Don't go into self preservation self-preservation mode and don't take things into your own hands trust in the lord glory to god hallelujah thank you lord with all your heart all of your heart he says and lean all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding all of your heart that means everything that's happening inside of you god cares about it God is concerned about what's going on in your life. God is concerned about what happened to you when you were two years old, three years old, four years old. Just because nobody else acknowledged it or was concerned about it does not mean that God has not heard or seen what's happening and doesn't care about what's going on in your life. He cares. I don't care if you're 70 years old and this happened when you were 10 you're still God's child. You're still his baby. We're all his children. God, help me. I don't know why I'm off in the, in, the, in this deep, but um, glory to God. You know, this nation, this world, we need healing. All of us do. And we can't keep sweeping this stuff under the rug or we're never going to truly evolve. We're just going to keep accumulating stuff and money and and just be sick and addicted to drugs and as um, unhealthy and, and just physically, mentally unhealthy, disconnected from our father. If we don't stop and acknowledge him, I mean, all of this nation... He says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek seek my face, pray, turn from their wicked ways, then will he hear from heaven and he will heal their land. I don't know about you, but if you have any kind of conscience, if God has awakened you, if, if, God, if God has opened your eyes to any of the, anything that's going on, you know and you see the the condition that we are in as a nation, as a world. Glory to God. Listen, I know I'm I'm passionate about this, but it's it's real to me, y'all. I see it. I see so much. I think, and I, I internalize even what I see sometimes because I feel like, you know, it's like y'all don't see what's going on. Y'all don't see what's happening. Your heart not breaking. Even if it's not somebody else's business, even if just your own life, your own issues, stuff don't hurt your feelings, stuff don't make you think anxious and think about you, you know, y'all ain't, y'all ain't ready to heal. <laughs> Glory to God, y'all. I'm, um, I'm going to carry on because I ha- I must carry on, but, um, thank you for listening. I really pray this blessed you like it blessed me guys. Um, don't take matters into your own hands. Trust the Lord. Acknowledge him. Make time for him. Make room for him. Glory to God. And um, he will add value to your life. He's not trying to take away nothing from you. He's not trying to make you less cool or less whatever you're trying to be. He's trying to add. He's trying to change the quality, upgrade your life. Glory to God. So be blessed. Uh, Once again, my name is I'm Unique. If this helps you in any sort of way, like, subscribe to the channel so you can get video. Whenever I upload something, you can hear the message. Uh, I know know I'm not as consistent as I would love to be. I don't have like a every day or every week, but when God gives me something, I, I push it out and well, he pushes it out of me. Um, and so here we are, (laughs) but God bless you once again, take care until next time.